Hello and a very good evening. You're now watching English News at 5. Clinical waste has increased by 20% since the outbreak of COVID-19 in the country. Environment and Water Casa Minister Dato Sri Tuan Ibrahim Tuan Man said waste like personal protective equipment categorized as clinical waste after being used for handling of COVID-19 patients. Gathered and disposed at clinical waste disposal plants with environmental pollution control technology. The day one right here today that under the Environmental Quality Regulation Scheduled Waste 2005, waste such as disposal plastic materials generated from government gazetted health facilities and COVID-19 quarantine centres are categorised as scheduled waste such as pathogenic waste, clinical waste or quarantine materials. And that clinical waste must be disposed at stipulated premises licensed by the Department of Environment. Tuan Ibrahim was replying to a question Dr. Ahmad Jazlan Yaqub who wanted to know if CASA planned to establish special plants for clinical waste in each state due to the increase in waste since March in the wake of COVID-19 outbreak. However, the minister said waste such as disposal plastics used by public at premises like wet markets, supermarkets, offices, factories and such that were used for self-protections against COVID-19 infections were categorised as domestic waste. These waste were managed by local government under the Housing and Local Government Ministry. In order to realise Sarawak's aspiration of becoming a developed state by 2030, the Sarawak government has upped efforts to upgrade the quality of its workforce. Chief among them, the engineers. According to Deputy Chief Minister Tan Sri Dr. James Jamud Masing, engineers play an important role in transforming the landscape of the construction industry. Masing, who is also Minister of Infrastructure and Port Development, said engineers would need to be equipped with a complete infrastructure to carry out their work to the best of their abilities, thus positively impacting the development of the state. You must understand that engineering is very dynamic in nature, in dynamic in the sense that Thing changes, system change, method doing thing change, and I hope that they are, they are the changes of all these new item, new new way of building thing, new ways of building. He said this after officiating the Intec Engineering Center, Institute of Engineering Malaysia (IEM) Sarawak branch on Monday. The four million ringgit Intec will be built in Samarhan and will be at the center of Sarawak's engineering transformation. Masing added that through Intec, Sarawak will carry out many more research and studies on peat soil and swampland. This is to allow the construction of more solid and sturdy structures. 60% of Sarawak's land is made up of peat soil, and this poses a huge challenge to engineers who use optimal engineering techniques to build stable and sturdy structures. They, have no, they do not have much peat like ours. So they cannot build design road on pit, but Sarawak, yes. So I want to give them the opportunity to design that road on pit. Unless you do that, then we have problem in pit, construction of pit road all over Sarawak. With regards to that, the aforementioned centre will fully benefit the construction industry. So in this new building, we aim to establish the uh, innovation and research lab which is on the ground floor, where everyone have heard from our DCM speech just now that he has promised us to initially kickstart the lab with uh, support of our state government. You are in a architecture, engineering and consultant field, AEC. We try to promote uh, what we call uh, BIM, Building Information Model. That's why we are raising funds for the asset. And this is what will be a, a one-stop centre for BIM, hopefully for not only for Kuching, but for entire Sarawak. A total of 63.32 billion ringgit in petroleum revenue was paid to Sabah, Sarawak, Terengganu and Kelantan from 2008 till 2020. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Economy, Dato Sri Mustafa Mohammed said the total amount of petroleum revenue funneled to Sarawak and Sabah between 2008 and August 2020 are 25.3 billion ringgit and 13.2 billion ringgit each. 
The special petroleum payment to Terengganu and Kelantan in the same period earned them each 22.4 billion ringgit and 418.9 million ringgit, respectively. He said this when answering a question by Kulim Bandar Baru MP Datuk Sri Saifuddin Nasution Ismail concerning the amount of oil and gas royalty received by Sabah, Sarawak, Kelantan and Terengganu from 2008 to 2020. Mustafa said Petronas paid the 5% petroleum revenue tax via cash payment directly to the Sabah and Sarawak government. Welcome back. The Special Council on Malaysia Agreement 1963, MA63, is expected to convene for the first time this month. The Special Council will discuss on deciding matters that are important and need to be expedited and resolved. In the Prime Minister's Department, Sabah and Sarawak Affairs, Dr. Sri Dr. Maximus Onkili said the Special Council would also look into immediate executions of decisions made by the previous Cabinet Committee, especially the low-hanging fruit. He added that this proved the sincerity of the federal government in executing the rights of Sabah and Sarawak as provided by law and enshrined in the constitutions. He said this in a written reply to Sipitang MP Yamani Hafiz Musa, who wanted to know the recent development on the Special Council on MA63, and to Pasir Gudang MP Hassan Abdul Karim, who wanted to know the efforts taken by the government to honour the provisions of MA63. On September 9th, the Cabinet had agreed to the formations of the Special Council on MA63, and it was announced by Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin during the Malaysia Day celebrations in Cebu, Sarawak on September 16th. Twelve MPs were today appointed as new Public Accounts Committee PAC members. They are Bersatu MPs Dato Muhammad Fasya Muhammad Fake, Sabah Bernam, and Yamani Hafiz Musa Sipitang, Amno um, MPs Dato Sri Ahmad Maslan, Pontian, Tan Sri Noh Omar, Tanjong Karang, and Dato Jalaluddin Alias, Jelebu. Also appointed are Lukarisman Awang Sauni, GPS Sibuti, Ahmad Fadli Sha'ari, Pasemas, and Ahmad Tarbizi Sulaiman, SIK from PAS, as well as Nurul Iza Anwar, PKR Pematang Pau. The others are Dato Dr. Muhammad Hatta Mat Ramli, Amanah Lumut. Wong Shu Ki, DAP Kluang and Ahmad Hassan Warisan Papar. Dewan Rakyat Speaker Dato Azhar Azizan Harun said the appointments were as per Standing Order 76 Subsection 2 of the House of Representatives. The appointment of PSC Chairman Wong Ka Wo, DAP Ipoh Timur and Vice Chairman Dato Azizah Muhammad Dun Bersatu Beaufort were done on August 27. Four people have died, including one assailant and 15 people were wounded in a shooting in the heart of Vienna. Austria's officials said that two men and a woman have died from their injuries. A suspected attacker who was carrying an assault rifle and a fake suicide vest was also shot and killed by police. Austrian Interior Minister Karl Nehammer said the initial investigations indicate that the suspect who was killed had sympathised with the Islamic State group. Authorities were still trying to determine whether further attackers may be on the run. Austria's military has provided soldiers to guard key sites in Vienna, freeing up police to continue the investigation. Germany and Hungary have offered to send tactical police units to support their Austrian colleagues. Rescues in, rescuers in the Turkish coastal city of Izmir miraculously pulled a young girl out alive from the rubble of a collapsed apartment building on Tuesday. Four days after a strong earthquake hit Turkey and Greece, the girl was seen being taken into an ambulance wrapped in a thermal blanket amid the sounds of applause and chants of God is great from rescue workers and onlookers. <laughs> Media reports identified her as four-year-old Ayla Gezgin. She had been trapped inside the rubble for 91 hours since Friday's quack struck in the Aegean Sea. Rescuer told reporters that he heard a child scream before locating the girl next to a dishwasher. He said Ayla waved at him, told him her name and said that she was okay. Her rescue came a day after a three-year-old girl and a 14-year-old girl were also pulled out alive from collapsed buildings in Izmir. Meanwhile, death toll in the earthquake reached 102 after emergency crews retrieved more bodies elsewhere in Turkey's third-largest city. 
Officials said 147 quack survivors were still hospitalized and three of them were in serious conditions. Well, that's it for now, but for more English news updates, stay tuned to The Nightline at 11.30pm with Ruben Gomez. I'm Razi Ahmad for TVS. Stay safe.